Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button, also subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest. Shout out to the super chats, the donations, and the Patreon patrons. I want to give you guys my realist breakdown, the post fight breakdown for Omar Figueroa versus Robert Guerrero. Wow. So, congrats to Omar Figueroa. He stopped Robert Guerrero. I believe he's the first person to stop Robert Guerrero. Actually, I know he's the first person to stop Robert Guerrero. He stopped him in the third round. And this was kind of sad to see. I'm going to try to take you through the fight and then close, give some closing thoughts. Round one, I scored it for Robert Guerrero. He looked like he had some good energy, good combos. Omar Figueroa, he had been out of the ring probably as long, if not longer, than Robert Guerrero. But Danny Garcia said, I spar with Omar Figueroa a couple of times, and he, he likes to fill you out, and he doesn't really start getting busy till the third, fourth round, things like that. So it could have been that. Omar Figueroa, he, he said he needed the time off to cleanse his body, to heal. Guys that are punchers that throw volume of punches, a lot of times they have hand injuries. So I think he had broken or fractured knuckles or hands or whatnot so he took some time off and Robert Guerrero won the first round by the second round it was spelling trouble for Robert Guerrero reason being he was getting greedy to me he was he was trying to fight in the pocket in the phone booth but you, you got to understand that from my knowledge watching the careers of both Figueroa is probably a bit fresher I mean he had, he had some tough fights with the with the bell dude and then also um ricky burns and stuff like that but not like not like guerrero guerrero fought bigger dudes and anyway he was he stayed in pocket too long trying to have this phone book war and it paid it he got hit with the i think it was an uppercut and got rattled and rocked he still kept trying to plow forward leaving his head in the center like as a stationary target and then he was trying to do kind of what he did with Berto and have some smothering pressure. And then Figueroa, he got clipped with a couple shots, but he was still more composed. Then Figueroa knocked him down again off the ropes. It just Guerrero wasn't moving his head. And in my opinion, they could have stopped the fight after the second round because he looked done for. He looked drunk. I mean, when a guy has 10 seconds to survive, he got knocked down twice and he's... He's already, like, you can't survive 10 seconds. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand getting knocked down the two times earlier in the round, but you literally have 10 seconds to survive, and he got knocked down again in the last, like, let's say, seven or eight seconds. You know what I'm saying? So I think they could have stopped it right then and there and just packed it in, but they didn't. And he came out for the third round fully. That one minute ain't enough time to recover from an onslaught like that. And... He was, he was trying to, he showed heart, but I mean, it was, it was too much. And then he got hit with a body shot, a body shot, a very nice place body shot. I think Omar Figueroa is an underrated body shot, body puncher. He has like these real long arms, but this is his style of fight. So that's what he does. You know what I'm saying? He knows how to turn the punches, watch his fight with like Arakawa and stuff like that. Very tough, come forward, Japanese fighter. And the ref waved it off. They seen, okay, he got knocked down that many times you're done so he got the stoppage and i seen this coming with guerrero's career a mile away and if you go back to the videos and monday mail days and i'm not trying to i don't predictions like this i'm not necessarily happy you know i mean robert guerrero's from the he's from the bay area like me so i'd like to see people from my region do well but i predicted a long time ago and go listen to those old videos i was telling you guys that robert guerrero when he was a featherweight he would box more. Then his wife had cancer, so he took time off. I don't know, a year and a half, two years off. Came back and fought Selchuk Aydin, and he jumped up two weight classes. Beat him. Aydin was undefeated. But from that point on, he started fighting guys who were naturally bigger than him. And he started fighting them like he's Rambo or something. Like machismo. You know what I mean? And that... <laughs> You add too much mileage to your career. Berto didn't start at no fucking featherweight. 
I don't think Berto could even make featherweight unless he was a kid. You know what I'm saying? So even though you won that fight, it was still a war because you started off strong, but Berto showed massive heart and then he lumped you up. Then the Floyd Mayweather curse, you know what I mean? You fought Floyd Mayweather and he was just picking you off. I think Floyd almost stopped him. He said he had hand injuries, but go rewatch. It was round six through eight. He was just rocking Guerrero's head back and stuff. And a lot of y'all sleep on Floyd's power, but he got enough snap to stop you, especially, like I said, Guerrero's not, he, he filled into the division, but he's not a ready-made welterweight. You know what I'm saying? He's not like as big as Canelo. Put Canelo next to him. You know what I mean? So it's different. So I thought Floyd almost stopped him. Then he comes back, fights who? Who did he fight? Keith Thurman? No, he can't. His comeback fight was the guy who's fighting Kodo now. Kama, Yoshihiro Kamagai. Another war. And you put him on the map. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, you fight Keith Thurman, a big puncher. And listen to the interviews he was saying leading up. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. He, he thinks he's, he's one time and he has a big punch. Don't run. He's run time to me. Like, why would you... Why would you challenge that man in that way? Clearly, Thurman has some level of power. You know what I'm saying? And the writing has been on the wall for a minute to me. Then you do you get knocked down and look completely. He came back after the Thurman lopsided loss. Came back real quick a couple months later and fought Aaron Martinez, who got stopped by Josecito Lopez, right? And he he got knocked down and he looked out of it. He looked out on his feet against a guy who has very low KO. He has like four knockouts at the time or something. So it's just, I don't know, it's just crazy. And then you lose to David Peralta. I might've missed some people in there, but it just, like I said, you can't just go through all those wars. And I tell you guys, all these fighters, like Guerrero was a big featherweight. When he was in them little divisions, he was, he was pretty tall, stuff like that. If anything, if you were going to have wars, have wars with them little dudes, the Salidos and shit like that, and Vicente Escobedo. You don't fight Keith Thurman like that. You know what I'm saying? Because Keith Thurman has power over 150. He knocked, He has a knockout. He has a recorded knockout over 150. So to me, it was just dumb game plan. And for whatever, him and his team, they keep putting him in these, these in the trenches fights. You, you can't do that. You know what I mean? Like, Kama guy, Omar Figueroa. So yeah, like I said, all that fighting with your heart and relying on your chin, most fighters at some point will end up paying for that. If you don't have basic boxing fundamentals or you stop using them, it'll come back to haunt you. You know what I mean? Especially when you fight bigger guys. Look at Andre Ward. Andre Ward got hurt by Kovalev second round early in the fight. Kovalev, a known finisher. You guys get mad when I talk about this, but this is reality. A known finisher who stopped Jean Pascal twice in his backyard, stopped Nathan Cleverly in his backyard, etc. And Ward survives to win and Kovalev fades. And then they rematch and Kovalev gets stopped. You have to be able to make those adjustments. You know what I mean? If Ward was like trying to battle like Robert Guerrero did, he would have got knocked out. Cause you can't just be a sitting duck. Because this is the other thing. Like let's say round two, when Omar Figueroa dropped drop Guerrero he was hurt and he's buzzed and then he's trying to pounce right on top of you unintelligently so at the end of the day you're he's not hurt like you're hurt you know what I'm saying so you're attacking him at a disadvantage you know what I mean so all that machismo shit is is cool sometimes that can win you the fight but more often it won't you know what I mean you're better off conceding the round taking a long count which he didn't do another rookie mistake for somebody who's been fighting as long as Guerrero that first knockdown, take a long at burn, just like in basketball. In basketball, when a team has a lead of 13 points and it's the fourth quarter, 13 points is not a deficit that's impossible to come back from if you have enough time in the fourth quarter, right? So what the teams do, football does the same thing, but we'll use NBA, is they burn up the clock. You know what I mean? They have a shot clock, but they'll use mu almost all of the clock so the team has even less time to to uh, score and dig themselves out of the hole, especially if they make a couple more baskets. Boxing is the same way. You could reverse engineer it. You're hurt. You still have to survive for two minutes and 20 seconds. Take as long of a count as you can before getting counted out. So you have the most time to regroup 
and that type of stuff. And Guerrero didn't do any of those things, and he ended up getting knocked down three times. And like I said, you're attacking him, you're at a disadvantage because he's not hurt like you. You know what I mean? And he wasn't moving his head. I thought Danny Garcia and Virgil Hunter did a very good job with the commentary, um, just talking about what they've seen and, and whatnot. So it's good to get that good commentary going. But yeah, I think it's time for Guerrero to hang him up because, like I said, I'm not taking anything away from Omar Figueroa, but that style, I don't see him beating the top guys like Keith Thurman or Errol Spence. I mean, he can make for some good fights and maybe even go the distance, but he, he's he's not necessarily known for his defense. At least Errol Spence Jr., when Kell Brook was looking sharp as fuck with great movement and sharp, he was blocking shots and shifting and, and trying to slip punt. You know what I'm saying? Keith Thurman, we know how he fights. So... Even a guy like Omar Figueroa, he's not the guy who's been at welterweight as long. So, he's not going to be able to walk through all their punches, maybe like he did Robert Guerrero. But, it's just, like I said, the writings have been on the wall for a minute, to me, for Guerrero. You can't. I don't know why that was his MO, him and his dad, to start fighting naturally bigger guys. And, like, it's like, it kind of, it kind of came back to haunt him after the Floyd Mayweather fight, right? They say, oh, Mayweather's a chicken. He ran, bro. Right? So you say all this stuff. That's why I tell you guys, some of y'all are fucking idiots. Y'all talk all this running shit, and then fighters need to hang him up. All these fighters are younger than fucking Floyd. You know what I'm saying? Do you guys understand that? And there people are now, go go look through forums of this video, of this fight. People are saying Robert Guerrero needs to hang it up. Floyd is about to be 40, about to make 300 million. You know what I mean? And he's the favorite. So all that, oh, he ran, he's a chicken. But at least he has some longevity in this sport. You know what I'm saying? Having a good defense, overall complete fighter. You know what I mean? And I think the Guerreros kind of hindered themselves because they did all that. Oh, he ran. So then when it came to Keith Thurman fight, they didn't want to be the runners. But you should have ran if that's what you guys want to call it. You know what I'm saying? You should have ran from Keith Thurman and made a do like Luis Colazzo. Colazzo made it. He, You know what I'm saying? he The first round in that Colazzo Thurman fight, he was making it hard for Thurman to hit him. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you got to, you know what I'm saying? You have to do different shit for different people. On top of that, like I said, I think Robert Guerrero was in desperate need of a fight with someone who's not known to be a huge puncher or provide wars like Birdo, Floyd Mayweather's just an accurate puncher, comma guy, Aaron Martinez, Omar Figueroa. Those three people, last three I just said, they're all known for being in wars. You know what I'm saying? So when you're not the freshest, of course, of course you're going to go down. So it is what it is. That's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on the fight. What's next? Who should Omar Figueroa fight? I think a Broner fight would be good after a win like this. If Broner gets past Mikey Garcia, I think they can make something like that. I wanted to see that back in the day, but Figueroa hadn't really been making no noise. So it kind of, I lost interest in it. But if Broner wins and Figueroa just won, hey, I wouldn't mind it. Let me know your thoughts. Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you share the video. Like the video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video, Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.